All right, welcome back. Last time, we cracked the code on integers. But here's the question. What happens when we need decimals? Ever wonder how a computer designed to work with ones and zeros handles something like 3.14? How do these fractional numbers even fit into RAM? And what does it take to store them in Zig? Today, we're diving headfirst into the world of floating point numbers, uncovering how computers store, calculate, and approximate decimals. By the end, you'll see why decimals are both fascinating and tricky, and how Zig handles them under the hood. This is a huge piece of the programming puzzle, and understanding it can change the way you think about data and precision. So grab your favorite drink, and let's unlock the mystery of decimals in Zig. So, let's start with a basic question. What makes decimals different from integers? Unlike whole numbers, decimals have fractional parts, which makes them harder to represent directly in binary. To store these numbers, computers use a method called floating point representation. But before we dive into floating point, let's connect this to something familiar, scientific notation. Scientific notation is a way of expressing very large or very small numbers in math and science. It breaks a number into two parts, a mantissa, the significant digits, an exponent, which indicates the position of the decimal point. For example, the number 3.14 times 10 to the power of 2 represents 314. Here, 3.14 is the mantissa, and 2 is the exponent, meaning we shift the decimal point two places to the right. But why does this matter? Scientific notation allows us to represent a vast range of values concisely, making it easy to handle numbers like 0.0000314 as 3.14 times 10 to the negative 5 or 3,140,000 as 3.14 times 10 to the 6. Computers use a similar approach to represent decimals, known as floating point notation. However, they work in binary rather than decimal. So instead of 10 as the base, they use 2. This is standardized by something called IEEE 754. This stands for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. And 754 is the standard they created for representing floating point numbers in computers. This standard outlines a precise way to store floating point numbers, breaking them down into three main parts. Sign bit. This single bit tells us if the number is positive, zero, or negative, one. Exponent. This part holds the information about the scale of the number, effectively placing the decimal point, mantissa. This stores the significant digits of the number itself. Let's look at an example of how this system would represent a specific decimal number, like 3.14. All right, let's take everything we've learned and apply it to an example representing the number 3.14 in IEEE 754 system using 32-bit single precision format. But wait, what is single precision? Well, before we dive into the details, let's clarify what single precision means. In the IEEE 754 standard, floating point numbers are typically stored in two formats. Single precision. This uses 32 bits to store each number, which includes one bit for the sign, positive or negative, eight bits for the exponent to determine the scale of the number, 23 bits for the mantissa to store the significant digits of the number. Double precision. This uses 64 bits with one bit for the sign, 11 bits for the exponent, 52 bits for the mantissa. In short, single precision is a 32-bit representation that provides a balance between memory efficiency and precision. It's generally accurate to about seven decimal places and is often used when you don't need extreme accuracy or are working with limited memory, like in graphics or scientific calculations. Now that we know what single precision is, let's apply it to our example and see how 3.14 fits into this format. Now, let's start with the integer part of 3.14, which is 3. To convert any number to binary, we divide by 2 repeatedly until we reach 0, keeping track of the remainder each time. So, let's break the process down into a few steps. Step 1. Dividing 3 by 2. When dividing 3 by 2, we get 1.5 as the result of the division. But when converting integers to binary, we only take the integer part of the result. That is, we take the 1 and ignore the half, because it cannot be represented as an integer. Now we have the quotient, but we are missing the remainder. But what is the remainder, and how do we get it? Well, the remainder is what is left over from the division process, after taking out the integer part. To calculate the remainder, we use the following equation. Remainder equals original number, minus integer part times 2. Now we apply the equation as follows. Remainder equals 3 minus 1 times 2 equals 1. So the remainder is 1. 